So, ελπίζω να είστε έτοιμοι για να μάθουμε ιστορίες. So, you better be ready for this history class uh, that uh, So someone thinks I'm famous. <laughs> okay. Or crazy. So I'm in Florence, Italy, and today we're gonna talk about this uh, this bridge that there was it's funny how Okay, let me start over. The only reason why I'm doing this right now is because I think that it was almost highly unlikely for me to find out about this bridge. And I did nevertheless, which means that if I found out about it, then so should you. Because I was lucky enough to be taking a photo uh, on another bridge and actually, let's take the other road. So I was taking a photo on this other bridge and there was this couple, you know, walking by and I asked them, so, you know, just to be safe, this is Tivere, right? The river. And they go like, no, that's Arno. And I'm like, okay, all right. You have many rivers, guys. So uh, we started talking about Arno and, you know, um, the woman tells me, uh, and that one over there is Ponte Vecchio and I just look you know in the horizon and I'm like what is and she goes like that one over there is Ponte Vecchio and I'm like is it a pond she goes like pond and she turns around to her partner and he goes like that they say something in Italian anyway and they go like no 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 it's not a pond it's a bridge and I was like okay and I didn't know because we were already standing on this bridge. So I'm like, and it's important, why? You know, because? And she goes like, uh, you know, it's Ponte Vecchio. And I'm like, oh my God. Like my mom does this to me. Like she keeps doing this to me. She's like, you know, I ask her a question and especially if it's history or philosophy or geography related, she keeps repeating the answer. And I'm always like, you mean by that? You know, so they go like, uh, this is Ponte Vecchio. This is one of the most famous uh, bridges. Like, honestly, I'm gonna show you the bridge. I mean, in terms of aesthetics, it's just another bridge, right? But turns out that it, it was strategically important, let's say back then. And also there is this, this, this kind of rumor that um, Hitler took a liking to it and actually made sure that even though they bombed every other bridge here, uh, he asked that this one not be bombed. Anyway, so also they say, they told me that there used to be, this used to be um, uh, the bridge where tanners and butchers would uh, sell their, you know, uh, stuff but um, and then later on jewelers would uh, would sell jewel jewelry but also they told me that uh, no actually that one I read I do some reading actually by the way this is what I'm looking at while you guys are stuck with me okay let's make things a little bit fairer to you okay so better this way okay so what's interesting is that the Medici family which is probably the family of Romeo could it be that one I didn't look up I just figured so maybe you shouldn't really figure things out when you you know do a video but anyway so they said that while they were crossing the bridge they were appalled by the stench of the meat and all that so they just decided that there it's not no longer going to be a 
uh, a bridge where uh, they sell, you know, uh, leather or meat or anything, or maybe they were just uh, vegans, you know? So they had conscience. So <laughs> it was a matter of conscience. But then again, they were the ones who wouldn't let Romeo marry Juliet, provided, of course, that I was correct, that the Medici family was that one. Anyway, uh, so this is half accurate and half, you know, like probably accurate or maybe inaccurate. So this is like the Schrondinger's video. Am I making any sense? Well, we'll find out. So they decided that from now on, this is going to be just a, a jewelry only kind of bridge. And again, they told me that there are supposed to be some shops here. I cannot see any, I cannot see any shops. But let's see, do you see that? You know, like, it's just a bridge. But then again, someone could say something similar about the part and they could go like, oh, well, you know, these are just, you know, random kiosks or anything. <laughs> so yeah, let's see. Am I sure that this is the, you know what? Scratch that. This is not, I don't think that this is the one I'm talking about. It's the next one. It's good though, because we're gonna use this as control bridge, you know? So let's see, I've taken out my cell phone. Beautiful dress, I love the style. Okay, let me cross that bridge. Okay, let's see. Yes, we're not there yet. It's that one. So see, now you get to compare, thanks to me and my, you know, minor and unimportant mistakes. So, oh, by the way, there is this gelateria that I tried earlier, pretty good, pretty good, but not like lose my mind over it but pretty good check this out come on guys we don't have all day so yes in a we don't want to see you per se is this better don't tell me that I nailed it almost nailed it yeah anyway almost nailed it so maybe there are shops. Oh, do you see how many people there are? Okay, so I'll see you in a while. And even though this is a high budget production from Hollywood, I'm gonna be doing my own backstage. So see, in order to cross this street and the next, I put on my mask because there's a lot of people and you cannot be too careful. You remember this expression? We've talked about this. When you say, when you, you say, when you want to communicate that you have to be very careful, you use two negative forms. The first one is you cannot, and the other one is two. Two has a negative uh, meaning, so you cannot be too careful. So for example, when you, if you have two desserts, then you say, you know what, I need to make sure that I don't feel hungry afterwards, you know? You cannot be too careful. I can, I can sense nutritionists uh, cringing at what I just said, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm kidding.
siete stati la sua Instagram and share it with you guys. 